So I often say uh, to my students that uh, if you want to improve your scoring, right, if you want to improve your scores, not necessarily you know other aspects of the game, but you know focusing on scoring, you want to do better when you go to your club game, then work on your defense. Right? Defense is key, especially playing match points. I really got the beard going. Sorry about that. Got a neck beard too. Um, but work on your defense. That that you know once you, if you're the you're the pair that is you know, taking one more trick and not giving up extra tricks, then you'll do fine. You'll be amazed at, I mean, we're talking of an immediate you know, like, uh, increase in your scoring, you know, and you may go from a just under average player, like, in, you know, in those 47, 48s, you know, to, you know, starting to bang your head against that glass ceiling of 55%. So it's worth the work. On board two, we get a chance on uh, to to play some good defense and it, it involves using the the important tools of uh, like the critical tools of defense which is counting points uh, counting distribution um, keeping your eye out for promotions if, of your cards uh, learning how figuring out what cards your partner could have what honors they could have so you can lead at them when it's necessary and um, it makes this relatively straightforward contract of two hearts beatable, right? So while everybody else is giving up 110 in this game, right, or more in two hearts, if you can set it, right, you'll get plus 100, right? So instead of negative 110, you're plus 100. That's a 210-point swing. At an imps game, these are critical, right? How do you do this? You get good at defense. All right. So they bid to two hearts. Now... I'm on opening lead, and the opening lead turns out to be the most critical play. Well, one of the critical plays, but definitely you can give it away right now. Um, I like to lead passively against suits, um, and I also like to promote cards. So you can, you can promote the queen of diamonds, right, by just simply leading the king of diamonds. But what bothers me about that is the fact that south, right, the opening hand is open diamonds. So we're looking at south being either four, four, right, four diamonds, four hearts, or maybe even five diamonds, four hearts. Either way, I feel like if I start leading diamonds, I may be setting up as diamonds, right? So I don't want to do that. And so I'm, I turn to other suits. Uh, a trump lead is usually right when you're just trying to cut down, uh, if you think they're going to be roughing back and forth. Right, and that that's how they're going to make their contract. We have no indication that they intend to make this contract by cross roughing, so I don't see the imperative to lead hearts. Plus, I got the ace of hearts, I can always lead hearts, you know, fairly quickly once I get in. So, I really think it comes down to black suit leads. Um, and here it won't matter to you which you lead, you will have a chance to set if you lead either black suit. Um, I won't lead the queen 10 8 just because that seems like a suit that looks good when leads are coming to it rather than lead going away from it. So I'm going to ignore the clubs. I'm going to lead a double 10. Uh, I don't believe in this whole baloney about uh, there's a nursery rhyme, never lead double 10. I'm not looking for a rough. Right? Did any of my analysis sound like I was trying to get a rough? Yeah, not one bit of it, right? I'm just trying to get out of my hands safely. So trick comes down. Um, and partner wins with the queen, and North doesn't play the king of spades. We can place the king of spades in the list. So he has king, queen of spades. That's five points. Let's see, they got eight. Uh, yeah, sorry, they had a jack there, so they had 12, uh, 13, 14 points open in hand. Give them, give this guy six to nine, right? And our partner could have upwards to eight, nine points. I mean, a two heart contract, right? They didn't look for games, so nobody had extras. Right. So I, I, I would like to see my partner show up with another king, right? Um, king of clubs might be one, right? That wouldn't, that wouldn't hurt us, sitting after the ace. Can't be the king of diamonds. We know he has the king of spades. The other one is the king of hearts, right? So I'm looking, I mean, I'm an optimistic guy, I'm looking for a high card in my partner's suit. The other thing I like is that if I, that I can lead through the ace-10 if he has the king of spades. So that just sounds good to me, better than leading through like leading up in, in, to north and watching his queen of hearts fall to the king or something. So um, I'm going to choose him to have the king of spades um, and, and to have the king of clubs, right? And I'm willing to be disproved later. 
Now, this is a really interesting lead. He leads a diamond back, but 10 of diamonds falls. Now, remember, we're always looking for promotion and for extra tricks, right? We know we're going to get the king, right, or the queen, but now the jack of diamonds is missing. Where is it? Right? It's not here. It's not in south. My partner has it. That's sweet. But it's okay also if north has it, right? Either way, if he has three diamonds, right, because I'm going to win this, I'm going to force the ace out here, right? Now that's one. I'll get the king, and if he has a third diamond, right, and there's no reason why he can't, right? It turned out that south only had four diamonds. So um, I'm a little excited, right? Now now, the, now it looks like we have a diamond finesse that's possible, as long as we can get it. So here's the club lead, and uh, it's an interesting lead. It doesn't seem like West will have the king of diamonds, the king of clubs, and he doesn't, right? So now we know that if he has another king, it's got to be the king of hearts. He'll rough out his clubs here. Looks like uh, North started with um, four clubs, no, three clubs. Which gives our partner four clubs. I don't know if that matters. Here comes the Jack of Diamonds, though, right? There's the Jack, it fell. So now I need to score the Nine of Diamonds if it's available. I need to lead the Five of Spades through West. And of those two things, which seems most important right now? Well, if I lead the Nine of Diamonds, I'm not going to do any damage, right, if, the, if, the, if, if in fact, North um, is void. He'll just rough, right? But it's not a rough and slough. If I lead the Five of Spades and he goes up with the Ace, that's two, that's not... You know, I'm thinking that the way to do this, plus I'm not guaranteed, it, you know, that my partner doesn't have... Uh, is an out of diamonds. So my, anyways, my inclination is this was a gift. I wanted it. I saw it. I want to take it if it's there. And it is. So diamonds were four, three, 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 and I have the last diamond. Don't want to leave the diamond because it can rough in either hand. And no guarantee that my partner can over rough um, if he roughs in this hand. Although we want him to have the king, but if he has the king, it doesn't matter. So, But regardless of all that, I have this other issue that I needed to take care of, right? Which was to set up his king of spades. Now, once again, we need North to have three spades. Okay. And now what do I do? Well, I can't lead a diamond uh, because I have the last one. Rough and slough that and narrow somebody down to uh, one spade. It might be his last spade. If, you know, if somebody can throw from three spades, I don't want to give him that chance. Queen of Clubs is the same problem. It's a good card, but once again, and, and, you know, it could lead to a rough and slough. So now here I am, like, do I want to lead the heart? I didn't really want to lead the heart if it was the queen, but uh, he's got the king of spades, and if he has the two kings there, this hand is over, and so I choose the four of hearts. Partner comes through with the king. Now we just need a good break in spades, and when that shows up, um, we, uh, we set the contract. So defense is difficult. It's hard beyond belief, but it's because... Um, because we got to figure out where the cards are when we can't see them, right? We can't see our partner's hand. We can't see the declarer's hand, right? So we have to deduce everything. When you do it, make these assumptions with a real positive framework, remembering that we want to, uh, that thinking of negative, of all the things that can go wrong in defense doesn't really help us. What really helps us is positive work with rosy glasses on, making assumptions that help us. Here, what do you have? Six, eight, nine. We said he could have up to nine points, right? Because at 11, two hard contracts, you know, split deck, right? We got our opening lead, which we made just to get out of our hand. We set up the king of spades, so we know that's there. Now we're just waiting for, you know, some good splits, which we got, if you noticed, in spades and in diamonds, right? Partner has king. King of hearts is a trick. He has king of spades, which is a trick. And good robot partner there led back uh, through the diamond, right, and set up that uh, the uh, king for me, and um, and there we are. So let's go to board five. I'm not sure what was going on in board five. This auction seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, it doesn't end up where other people ended up. 
although I only have three of the four squares here. So I have six, seven points. I have a five card heart suit um, and I'll bid the hearts here. And when my partner jumps, he's promising a good invitational hand and I need to make a decision whether another, uh, whether I should go to game or not. This is not a forcing bid, all right? It's a jump raise. Um, so it's a, it's a good invitational hand. And, you know, some of my, my club points are soft, except for the fact he bid them. So maybe the queen and jack of clubs end up being nice cards to have. So I would normally discount the queen jack, but because it's in my partner's suit, I'm not going to. So I got seven points if my partner has, has, uh, um, has 17, then we're really close to game. If he only has 16, it might be a real tough one. Do I feel like that one point matters? Kind of like the fact that I'm going to be out of clubs and he bit him first. Hoping that he might be a two-suited hand, so maybe he gets some roughs. We do have an extra trump. Um, and it's imps, right? I'm not sure I make this bid at match points. I think I might just be happy to make three plus one. I don't think a lot of people will be going to game, actually. Right? So at imp pairs, I'm thinking, or in a Swiss team, I'm thinking this is a chance to really make some, make some points, right, if I'm right. And generally speaking, at imps, if you're wrong, you don't lose that much. Right? You might lose a few imps, but uh, winning, making these hands can lead to big swings. Get a diamond lead. So we can place the ace of diamonds over an east. Uh, don't want to just offer up the king, but we can see that diamonds has the potential of being a three loser suit. Um, and we have uh, the queen jack did turn out to be very cool cards because um, the ace king could be a chance for us to um, for us to pitch a couple diamonds if we get the chance. It seems like the spades uh, are going to have to be, um, we don't really have a loser in them right now. Um, I don't really need to try to take a finesse there, so I don't, because if I'm gonna, if we're gonna have any luck at all in pitching losers from our hand, diamonds on our hand, on these two clubs, you know, then we'll be fine. We don't, we won't need any more. We just need those two clubs. So I don't think I will take a finesse, which just creates the chance of an extra loser. Right? If I take the finesse and it loses, then I've got the diamond problem. Um, and also I gave him a spade that I didn't need to because I can rough the spade. So we get the club lead. All right. And uh, I'll want to use the king of spades here maybe as an entry for my clubs. I play the jack clubs then have these two to pitch on. So I think I'm, the idea is to tackle these hearts first. We're missing the ace queen um, and then blah, blah, right? There's, there's four of them missing. They're missing ace, queen. Those are the critical ones. And then we have from 10 all the way down to the six. So that five and two are missing. So critical to locate the ace, queen. Um, we'll start by just leading up a heart. I guess we won't have any problems locating the ace. And when East shows out, we don't have any problems locating the queen, right? So he has queen, five, two left in hearts, which means we can now pick up the heart suit, okay? Um, we will do that, however. We're gonna need to get back to our hand. We're gonna end up, I'm throwing the king because we no longer need that. Um, need this club to survive though. And it does. Now we can use the ace of spades for another entry. There goes the 10. Now we can lead back. And if this survives, right, now we can pick up the queen of hearts. All right, so just kind of keeping an eye on where things are falling. We preserve the ace king of clubs to pitch a couple diamonds. And we have one loser left. Know the ace is over there, and that's what he has left. But somebody's going to have kept a spade. And there we are, making. So, interesting auction. Um, I'm not sure how we don't get to uh, four hearts. Like I said, you might only stop at three hearts just because you think you're light and you don't like your queen of clubs and your jack of clubs. But as you saw here, where our partner had started with the clubs, it's fabulous. He had 7, 10, 14, 18 points. 
right? So the right move turned out to be going to four hearts, but it was a little iffy to start. So our last hand of the season of next step pairs, the last hand until September, um, is uh, it's a very interesting hand. Uh, board six, um, and the auction, oh, I don't know if I'm into this auction. Uh, uh, it's entirely possible that three clubs is the best place to play, and maybe at match points I don't go any further with my 18-point hand. Here, uh, here I'm thinking... Here I'm thinking that seven hearts, um, sorry, I'm not thinking seven hearts at all, or maybe I was, a random seven hearts thought. Um, um, what I'm thinking is if he has seven points, right, then we're there, and this three clubs could easily, if it's distributional, you know, we could. He's got long clubs, or can I set up a club suit? If he has six of them, can I, you know, I, anyways, you can see where this, this bit is not obvious yet, Everyone at the table was in three neutral, so I felt compelled to get there. Um, also, a spade lead, which I think is really tempting, as we'll see from West Hand, gives the, gives away the contract. So we have uh, two pairs making and two pairs not making in no trump. And I didn't look, but I would guess that the making pairs either figured out how to play this um, or got a spade lead. Um, anyways. Diamond comes down instead. Now, diamond lead, I'm going to guess, is from four, from five. Okay, if I give it, diamond, diamond, give him five diamonds, that's five, three, three, two, right? Which means we're going to get one diamond trick. We can't help but get one diamond trick. Um, so we got one diamond trick. We have two clubs for three. We have two hearts for five. And we have two spades for seven. And if the club suit breaks, we don't even have to take a finesse. All right, we, right, we have finesse positions in both diamonds, I mean hearts and spades. Um, the one in hearts is a two-way, right? We could take lead up to the ace-10 or we could lead back to king-jack. Um, so we have a backup plan. We're going to set up the clubs as the, ob the obvious first one and we get our diamond trick right away. Now what this means is that if it was 5-3-3-2, three, three, then if either finesse loses into east hand, then there's a really good chance that we're going to get uh, stung with a diamond lead here. They'll give, the, if I lose the, the, the Queen of Hearts in East, then they will lead a diamond through. Um, same thing sort of happens, it doesn't really happen in spades, because at least that way I'm taking the spades lead through uh, East, but then if it loses to West, well then he's in there with the Queen of Spades, and then he runs his diamonds. Uh, so uh, at this point in time, it certainly appears like the club's better break. And we'll find out. And uh, no, they don't. And he throws a spade. All right. So this means that we can't set up the clubs, right? Because we would set up the clubs by giving away the queen, and then they'll lead through, and then the diamonds will run and we'll be down. So we have to abandon our club prob our club hopes. And instead, we're going to start, we're going to need to pick up an extra, a couple extra tricks. And frankly, this looks really bad. Um, we have two possible finesses. If they both win, right, then we do great. Now, the chances of you making one of the finesses when you try two uh, is pretty good. At least there's a 75% chance that at least one of them will make. But to expect both of them make is, it leads to a different, entirely, uh, not a very good conclusion. Um, but there's one other solution. Right, and that is that um, the spade finesse always works if West has to lead them. The spade, right? If West has to lead a spade, we will always be getting our, our tricks. So now the problem is how to negotiate getting the lead into West's hand at the point in time where he has to lead us a spade. So this is where counting becomes critical. We started with him with five diamonds, right? Um, and uh, which means he has four left, and uh, he will win those four, presumably. Um, he had so if he has five diamonds, he has one club. That's six, and what we really want to know is how many hearts does he have. And this is where I, this is where I'm going to take, choose to take the finesse. I don't know if this is absolutely golden right, but. Um, Five.
finesse works, two hearts so far from west, and he shows out again. All right, so what do we have? Um, he had started with five diamonds, and he has five spades, he had one club, and two hearts. He no longer has any hearts, he no longer has any clubs, and we're now in the position where maybe he has to lead us a spade, because all he has left is spades and diamonds. Um, go over and take my ace of spades. All right. And now if he ever has to lead a spade, I should get two. But I'm going to have to put him on. I can't put him on lead with a club, obviously. So I put him on lead with a diamond. There we go. That's their first trick. Their second trick. Remember, he can't lead a club. And he's going to run out of his diamonds. He's getting his four diamond tricks. And there's the last one. And now all you have to do is sit and wait for him to make your finesse for you. All right. Not that hard to count. Um, it helps if you practice it now and then um, instead of just flipping cards. But here, where we really didn't want to try two finesses on our own, uh, we were able to negotiate an, an end play in which this 5-5-2-1 five, five, hand had to lead us a spade. Right? And there we are. Ta -da! Thanks, everybody, again, for playing um, through the course of the season. And uh, see you in the fall. Hopefully see you a lot more in BBO. Uh, if you're interested in private lessons, please give me a contract. Give me a call. Uh, you got my email. And uh, um, pretty reasonable. Take care.